Like any country, Ghana has its good and its bad. But we're here to tell you how the good far outweighs the bad. Forget the blackouts, aka dumb sore and poor Wi-Fi, because that doesn't describe this exquisite West African country and its people. Here are 15 things you didn't know about Ghana. Number 1. The people of Ghana are a proud people and uber-friendly. Akwaba. It means welcome, and that's the feeling you'll get whenever you travel in Ghana. You feel welcome. Locals love their country and are always eager to show you around. But be wary if you're offered Akpateshi. This is a local liquor which Spokesman.com says tastes like fire to the uninitiated, burning all the way down the throat to a nervous stomach. Number 2. Ghana brought you a Zonto. If you can stomach Akpateshi, you might find yourself dancing to Azanto. We won't lie, there's a debate about who owns Azanto. Ghanaian rapper Sarkodi claims he's its originator, but the bottom line is that the popular Azanto slang and dance is from Ghana. On a side note, the Financial Times reported that Sarkodi is the first Ghanaian to win the BET Award for Best International Act, Africa. And Alexers, remember, wherever you're watching from in the world, you can click subscribe to receive more videos every day. Number 3. Art and death are taken very seriously. It's hard to imagine that a coffin could be a sought-after piece of art, but collectors around the world want to own a Ghanaian coffin. Why? Because they are literally pieces of art. Fantasy coffins are carved by hand. For locals, they cost around $400, but international collectors can expect to pay tens of thousands of dollars. Expect hair dryers, footballs, vegetables, fruit, or even ladybirds, as written by Emma Thompson for National Geographic. It's much more than a status symbol. The Ga people believe the deceased will continue their job in the afterlife, and the coffin acts as a reminder. Number 4. Ghanaians name their children based on the day of their birth. Like most African countries, there are many ethnic groups within them. In Ghana, groups like the Akan, Ga, Enzima, and Ewe name their children according to what day of the week they were born on. They may have slight differences depending on the group, but just because each person has one doesn't necessarily mean it will appear on their official documents. According to BBC, a Monday birth would be Kojo for male and Adwoa for female, and Sunday would be Akwesi for male and Akosua for female. Number 5. There are nearly 80 languages spoken in Ghana. And one of those is Ghanaian Pidgin English, which is also called Crew English, or if you're in the Akan region, it's known as Crew Brofo. This Pidgin English is mostly spoken in the southern towns and in Ghana's capital, Accra. Here are some of the headlines taken from the Ghana page on the BBC's website. Ghana First Lady Go Refund Taxpayer Allowance She Collects Since 2017. Ghana Extend Popular Census 2021 After Public Outcry. Why Ghana Landlords Away Collect Over Six-Month Rent Advance From Tenants Risk Jail Term Number 6. Beaches in Ghana When you think of Ghana, you don't think of beaches. You're probably only realizing now that Ghana even has beaches. And Aluxers, they've got beaches that are so beautiful and so surreal that you'll never want to leave. There's 560 kilometers of coastline in Ghana. Labadi Beach is the most popular beach in Accra, but to throw out a few other buttes, there's Kokrobite Beach and Cobra Beach, Cape Coast, Elmina, and Axim. Number 7. Elementary and middle school are free and compulsory since 1995. And as of 2018, high school education is also free, but it's not as clear-cut and simple. President Nana Akufo Addo promised tuition-free high school education when he became president in 2017. The only way to make this work was to adopt a double-track system. Basically, not all students go to school at the same time. This free education was so popular that classrooms were overcrowded, so now students take turns going to high school. As reported by the New York Times, the government is unwavering in its support of the new system, saying it delivers adequate education to more children. Number 8. 
Ghana's national food became a TikTok trend. It's not a challenge that sat well with everyone, but it certainly brought fufu to the table. Fufu is a dough made from boiled or ground cassava or plantain, which is a fruit similar to a banana. It's generally eaten as a side dish or with stews and saucy meals. The challenge was called Hashtag Fufu Challenge, where TikTokers would record themselves buying the staple and eating it. Many made highly derogatory comments about how gross the food was, but as highlighted by Miss Forsen on Twitter, so is the whole point of the Fufu Challenge to be disrespectful to African culture? Because why are people going out of their way to buy food, taste it, spit it out, and call it gross? It's okay to not like something, but to use it to disrespect people's culture? Shake my head. Number 9. Locals believe there are too many churches in Ghana. A question post on DW.com went as follows. Is religious life in Ghana out of control? Many people in Ghana would answer yes. In 2014, there were around 10,000 churches in Ghana. The problem residents are experiencing is that many new faith-based groups don't have an official church, so use various available places like schools for worship. As one Accra resident said, the churches are too many everywhere. Some of them make a lot of noise. You can't even talk. Number 10. The Value of Cocoa in Ghana We can thank Ghana for our constant supply of chocolate as they're the second biggest exporter of cocoa in the world. There are roughly 800,000 farmers cultivating cocoa, of which 70% is exported. In fact, it's really expensive to buy chocolate locally because there are such high taxes imposed on the domestic sale of chocolate and semi-finished cocoa products. Number 11. Ghana and Nigeria to end trade dispute. For many years, Nigeria and Ghana have had conflict over the Ghana Investment Promotion Center, or GIPC. This act enforced foreigners, including Nigerian traders, to make a $1 million commitment before doing business in Ghana. Selected lawmakers from both countries have recently met to enact the Ghana-Nigeria Friendship Act, according to ICIRNigeria.org. And Alexers, if you'd like to discover some more about Nigeria, we suggest you watch our video, 15 Things You Didn't Know About Nigeria. Number 12. The Origins of Kente Claw One of the biggest exports from Ghana, even making an appearance at a Louis Vuitton fashion show, is Kente Claw. As explained by Ghanaian writer Elizabeth Ohene for BBC, there are two main strands of kente cloth in Ghana representing two ethnic groups, the Ashanti and the Iwe, among whom the cloth is in fact known as kete. And Alexers, the fabric is rich, bright and powerful, and what was once reserved for royalty is now available to the masses. But the question must be asked, is it really kente if it's not hand-woven and printed on cheap cloth? As Ohene admits, it's a tricky question for Ghanaians. Number 13. The food is delicious. Ask anyone what they loved about Ghana and they'll tell you the food, especially the fufu. Overall, the Ghanaian diet has far fewer processed food options and much less sugar added, but every meal is crammed with flavor and is super fresh. If you'd like to learn some more about Ghana, head to Audible and download Ghana Culture Smart by Ian Udley. It's a five-star rated listen and we've got you covered with a free listen by going to aluxfreebook.com. Number 14. There's so much potential for this developing country. Everywhere you go in Ghana, you can see how the country is developing. Infrastructure is growing, highways are going up, even the Wi-Fi is getting faster and more reliable. Ghana has come a long way since the 6th of March 1957, when the former Gold Coast became Ghana. Number 15. One of the biggest African YouTube channels is in Ghana. Wode Maya is the owner of one of the biggest YouTube channels in Africa. He loves to promote Africa, and as he says, the image of Africa has been distorted around the globe and we're changing the narratives via YouTube videos, one country at a time. So Aluxers, what do you find the most amazing about Ghana? We'd love to hear from you. Now, you stuck with us until the end, of course, here's your bonus. You've heard about the fancy coffins, but have you heard about Ghana's dancing pallbearers? 
It's not a funeral unless you've got these talented guys as your pallbearers. They go by several names. Dancing pallbearers, dancing coffin, coffin dancers, coffin dance meme, or simply the coffin dance. Its creator is Benjamin Edu, and it's often seen in popular culture, including an Easter egg in COD Black Ops Cold War. Thanks for spending some time with us today, Alexers. We hope you enjoyed today's video. We always appreciate your likes, and don't forget to subscribe.